Hi, uh, thanks for coming along today. Uh, my name's David and I'd like to introduce you to my colleague here. This is GoPal. Hi everyone. Hey guys, today we're going to do a, an introduction on preparing and serving the espresso coffee. And uh, we'd like you to, there's a few code words we'll be using throughout the video. We'd like you to collect those code words as well to ensure that you've watched the video. So as you can see, preparing and serving espresso, we think that's quite important for the School of Hospitality. So you guys can get job ready, so it's quite important. First thing we're going to have a chat about our, our workplace health and safety. Obviously there's some issues with workplace health and safety. We've got issues with, obviously we've got aware of the electricity as well as the temperatures. The steam is very hot at 130 degrees temperature and we'll be using also water with electricity. Obviously we all know that that does not mix. So ensure that when you're using the equipment to make sure that you're not mixing the water and the electricity. We're going to chat about today some species of coffee. Uh, Arabica is, is uh, the coffee, a bean which is acidic, aromatic and sweet. This is a very soft bean as well and those sweet smells is actually coming from the Arabica uh, coffee. The other one we've got here is Robusta, it's chocolatey, it's less flavour and full bodied. So the first code word I want you to talk uh, to have is the, write down the word Robusta and that'll be our first code word for the day. Uh, our machine here, we have a rocket machine that we'll actually be using, well, uh, GoPal will introduce you to that as well. But today we're using the rocket machine for uh, AIBT. Uh, this is an Italian made machine, very, very good quality machine as well. Uh, today it's actually an R58 dual boiler and it's made in Italy as well. It has a two and a half litre, two and a half litres at the back that we fill that with water as well. You guys will be practicing that in the classroom tomorrow as well. The unit for this is, uh, is uh, this Sith Fab 005. That's if you were going to get the qualification. Today you'll have a certificate of participation. The requ key requirements that we need whilst we're doing the coffee is to ensure that the storage and hygiene requirements are met. Very important not to have uh, a dirty equipment. We need to keep it quite clean. Ensure that there is enough coffee. If we're working within the industry, it's very important to make sure that we've got enough coffee and cups available. Whilst we're working in the industry as well, there's serve, we need to serve multiple coffees at the correct temperature. Nothing worse than having a coffee that's, that's not hot enough, so it's very important that we're using the thermometer whilst we're testing. Considering the customer needs, every customer may have a different need. Some like it strong, some like it a bit cooler, so obviously there's some issues with uh, temperatures. Lovely bit of noise in the background. Understand the equipment. Today we'll chat about the equipment. We'll also talk about the, the what, what the different names of the equipment and how we use them as well. Work quickly. Obviously, if we're working within the industry, we need to be very, 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 very busy. This here is a French term, miss in place, which is it's translate to everything in its place. We have to ensure that everything is ready Whilst we're getting the customers coming in, it's very important that we have everything available. All the equipment, supplies are ready and stocked. Make sure the espresso machine is turned on to ensure it keeps warm. Follow the estab establishment's SOP. What's an SOP? SOP is standard operating procedure. We need to ensure that they're following the procedures. Lay out the sources, the spoons and the tray and have them ready for use. Organise syrups, flavourings that make sure they're nearby and ensure that you've got a little bit of noise in the background. So the, third, the second code we'll be using today is noise. So we remember that name, noise. Clean labelled milk jugs to make sure that everything is clean because milk does go off and it can become rancid and make people very, very ill. Warm cups in glasses on top of the machine. On top of the machine, it maintains the temperature in our glass, in our cups. We're using cold, fresh milk every day <coughs> to and make sure that we, we're checking the use-by dates. Also, smelling the milk to identify the aromas. So let's have a look at the daily startup. When we're starting our equipment up, we've got a, we're using some terms there, lock the group handles. So if I'll ask my colleague, if I'll ask GoPal here, to show us the group handles prior to turning on the machine. 
So these are what we're calling the brew panels, and that's where they're actually filled in the coffee, and we'll be putting the coffee ground coffee into there as well. <coughs> we're running <coughs> the hot water, pardon me, running the water through the handles to warm them up, to make sure that they, those group handles are warm. If we're using cold equipment, it'll drop the temperature of the coffee, so we have to ensure that the, <coughs> pardon me, the coffee is, uh, the equipment is hot. Fill the hopper with enough beans. So we'll be discussing the, the hopper, so we'll show you the hopper, and you'll be using that as well. Empty the dosage chamber of the old grounds. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Grind the fresh coffee and cover the chambers. So once again, we'll give you a practical demonstration of that as well. Make a fresh espresso and check for the quality. Let's check out how we're going to check the quality of our coffee. It's important storage coffee. When we're storing the coffee, it's best to be stored in bags with valves. You can actually push the air out, but no air will enter. Store in vacuum packed airtight tins. Only open a new bag for coffee when it's needed. And once it's open, store in a clean, dry, airtight tin. Also in a dark cupboard is beneficial. And store in the fridge or freezer if only if it's well sealed. Coffee is very sensitive to the light. We're going to chat about the essential equipment. When you get to go through on your quiz, these, these uh, questions will be within the quiz. Essential equipment, espresso machine. As you can see once again, is our, is our espresso machine and we'll be having a discussion in terms of their parts. This is what we call a tamper. The tamper, if GoPel can show us our tamper, this is to tamp down the coffee. So that is quite heavy and we need to put a downward pressure on the coffee and place down around about 20 kilograms of, of pressure. The next piece of essential equipment is the milk jugs. Once again, stainless steel milk jugs are very important so easy to keep clean as well. Essential equipment, the coffee grinder. We have a coffee grinder that, that grinds the coffee down to, the, to the, the, the powder form to ensure the coffee, the water will come through and, and, and draw the coffee. Grinder parts, the hopper is used for the whole beans, two to three hours. Only enough beans in the hopper for two to three hours, that way they maintain their freshness. Nothing nicer than a lovely fresh coffee. The dosage chamber, it collects the grounds, the coffee lever system. So ensure you make notes of the dosage chamber. And the tamper, the tamper is the third code word for the day, is tamper. This is to pack down the ground coffee in the filter basket. And the blades also within, the, within our grinder will grind the coffee beans. This here is what we call a knockout tube. Sounds really good, a knockout tube. What this does, once the, the cake, we call it the cake, or the, the, the coffee grounds are caked into the filter, we need to knock them out into the knockout tube. We obviously obviously need cups and cups and, and, and glasses as well for our different styles of coffee. This here is our single. We have a single group head and a double, sorry. They're the blind filters, single and a double. Once again, the group head handles. The filter basket holds the grinds. There's the filter basket, it holds the grinds. The group head is kept warm with the water. Insert the group handle left to right and use the blind filter to clean the machine. Thank you. Once again, you see the thermometer is very, very important with the thermometer when we're testing the milk temperature. As you can see, this thermometer is in the green. As it's coming to the, the yellow there, we're talking about 60 degrees. We stop the steam coming through, it'll actually flow through to 65 degrees, which is ideal temp. Cappuccino, coffee styles. Let's have a chat about styles of coffee. But perhaps most people are familiar with a cappuccino. It's an espresso topped with milk that has been steamed to a temperature of 60 degrees. It will rise to 65 to 70 and the texture to form a dense creamy foam. The ratios are a third espresso, a third milk, and the remaining is a third foam on top. 
and some dust with chocolate is optional. And as for GoPal, we'll be showing you, or Nick, or some of our trainers, we'll show you how to make some fancy patterns on top as well. Once again, the coffee styles, this is a latte. In actual fact, this is a latte, it's not a latte. The latte will be served in a glass. An espresso is with steamed milk added and topped with 10 millimetres of dense foam and served in a glass. Long black. A long black is fill the cappuccino cup with water, just under two thirds. So we add the hot water first, just under two thirds of hot water, and then we're going to add the, the crema on the top with a, with a doppio. The hot water is poured into the cup first to maintain the crema. A mocha. Once again, this is a, a lady's favourite, there's a mocha. Basically, it's a, it's a cappuccino using chocolate milk. So it's extract, it's espresso into a latte glass. Once again, there's your latte glass. It's uh, poured the chocolate powder together with 65 degrees. Pour the hot chocolate into the glass and dust with chocolate. You can also add some chocolate pieces on there as well, if you're really a chocolate So that's a mocha. This one's a macchiato, or a short one. This is very short. It's an espresso stain with a dash of hot or cold foam and it's placed two teaspoons of dense foam milk into the centre of the crema. As you can see, very, very strong. Ristretto. This means restricted. This is an extremely short espresso. It's only 15 mils for 15 to 20 seconds. It has the intense sweet flavour and long aftertaste served in a pre-warmed espresso cup. More coffee styles here is avocado. Take a large cup, pour two to three scoops of ice cream in and then pour the hot espresso over it and eat it. You can also use some liqueur, very really nice with Tia Maria or Kahlua. Not that I indulge quite often, but also that last one you can have uh, marshmallows in as well. Assessing the coffee. How do we assess it? How do we know what the coffee is like? We're going to be using our senses, obviously the aroma. What does it smell like? Does it smell correct? Is there a slight or burnt smell? And is it lacking any of aroma? So we're using the senses of the smell. Assessing the coffee is checking the body. How does it look? Is the color correct? What's it look like against the light? And is the, is the, color, is the color fine as well? So this is assessing the coffee. Once again, we're looking at the volume. Was the correct amount of coffee made? If you've made the coffee and it's quite thin, and liquidy, you perhaps there may not be enough coffee in there as well. So did it take the right amount of time to brew? We also do a timing on the brewing. The flavour, once again, the flavour is important when we're assessing the coffee. Does the coffee have the right mix of acidity, bitterness and sweetness? On our tongues, our taste buds, there are different regions on our taste buds so that we can actually determine the different flavours. But this is assessing the coffee flavour. The fun part of everything, everybody likes in hospitality, the best part is in a go pellet is when we're doing the dishes and cleaning. So we need to make sure we're using the correct cleaning solution for our recommended by the manufacturer. Ensure that the correct dilution is put in and we're using the blind filter to back flush that water out. Thank you so much. The one that we're using here is a cafeto. It's an espresso cleaning machine. It's actually like, like I'm on a commercial here, go <laughs> Always back flush with water. So there the coffee, that's, I believe that's the last of our slides. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come across and we're going to take some footy. Hi again everyone, uh, uh, I'm Gopal. I'm the hospitality trainer at uh, AIBD Brisbane. And now we're going to talk about uh, the Rocket coffee machine, which you saw in your PowerPoint presentations earlier. So this is the uh, rocket uh, coffee machine, espresso coffee machine and then you will see the different parts of the machine and you will also see uh, the grinder. Yeah, so the machine is turned on now. You can see a little green light that shows you that the machine uh, is on. And then we've um, got different parts of the machine. So we got um, the group head and then we got uh, the steam wand here and the steam controls which allows us to use the steam. As you can see the steam uh, is uh, coming out of the steam wand there and then we have uh, a tap for hot water if you want to make a tea or if you want to make a long black you could use hot water from there uh, we've also got these two group heads 
the group heads can come with two spouts or one spout depending on you're making single coffee or you're making two coffees you could use either two or uh, one uh, spout group head and uh, this will take about seven to nine grams of coffee and the double one will take about 15 to 18 grams of coffee we also have uh, milk jugs the jugs can be used this jug can be used to make uh, two cups of coffee and this one can be used for uh, one cup we also use a timer because we want to control our extraction to about 25 to 30 seconds and then we've got this uh, dredger that is used for cappuccino to sprinkle some chocolate powder and then we have this thermometer uh, as David pointed out earlier we've got um, a red section we don't want to heat up the milk beyond that which is about 65 to 68 degrees centigrade now this one fits into uh, the milk jug just like that and then we heat up the milk we are able to see the temperature of the milk through the use of milk thermometer coming to the grinder uh, the grinder has got a hopper the hopper holds the coffee beans and then we've got the dosing chamber and then we got a little lever here for controlling uh, the thickness of the ground coffee and then we have a little uh, attachment here on which the group handle sits and then we are able to grind coffee thereafter okay uh, now let's uh, make a cup of coffee now before we start making a cup of coffee uh, we need to know about health and safety and cleaning so we use three cloths here the one at the bottom is used for cleaning the table the one in the middle is used for cleaning the steam wand because the steam wand uh, is used for uh, steaming the milk and it needs to be cleaned after every use and then we got the cloth at the top that can be used for cleaning the group handle or that can be used to clean uh, the cups so uh, let's get to grinding some coffee now so we'll take a group head with uh, two spouts and then we got to grind some coffee so we put the group head onto the attachment and then we take uh, we grind some coffee after grinding the coffee we need to level it so we try and level it into the group handle and after grinding we're going to use the tamper the tamper is used to uh, flatten coffee into the group handle so that the extraction can be uniform the way we uh, use the tamper is we put the group handle on a steady surface and then use the whole arm to put about 20 kilos of pressure and polish it and then as you can see the coffee is compacted into the group handle now and it's ready for extraction so we've done the grinding we've done the tamping now we're going to do the extraction now before we extract the coffee we always purge the group head so that gets the group head nice and warm and now we're going to uh, load the group handle group handle into the group head and now we are ready for extraction the extraction typically takes about 25 to 30 seconds and then as you can see the extraction is happening there for about 30 seconds and in the meantime we can steam up our milk so that's about 30 seconds Our shot is ready. You can see a nice golden crema on the top. And now we're going to steam the milk. So I've got cold milk right here in the jug. And we fill up the milk only till the end of the spout because the milk expands after steaming. We also purge the steam wand. So that spits out any residual water which might be in there. And then we use the food thermometer. Uh, milk thermometer 
and then we'll start steaming the milk. We want a hissing sound and now as you can see in the thermometer the needle will keep going towards about 65 to 68 degrees centigrade and that's when we know that the milk is hot enough. So the milk is steamed now, we put the jug down, we clean the steam wand, we purge it, so that spits out any residual milk from there. And now the milk is steamed, now we'll pour some milk to make a cup of coffee there. We give it a little tap to make sure that all the bubbles are taken out and the milk looks like wet paint and then we pour our milk into the cup and that's your cup of coffee you can also make another another one And that's your cup of coffee. You can also garnish it with a bit of a coffee powder. And then you got your cappuccino and then you got your cafe latte. It is very important to clean the group head after use so we always use the coffee dump to get rid of any excess coffee and then we clean up the group head we give it a nice wipe and then we are ready for our next cup of coffee